I keep seeing this question popping up on social media so today I decided to make a video about this topic and hopefully clarify a few things and help those who are looking to buy a gimbal but really don't know which one to get. And if you're one of those people that say that gimbals are worthless, they're really a waste of money, then I'd advise you to watch the video until the end because although I get your point, I think there's more to it than that. So what's the best gimbal to buy? Well that's not an easy question to answer, there's quite a few variables that you need to consider before you go out and buy a gimbal. But to me the most important one you should consider over anything else is the setup you're gonna use. All gimbals have different payloads and if you want to have the best possible result from your gimbal and have really crisp and stable footage, you need to get one that actually can hold the weight of your camera and lens. So the first thing you need to do is to figure out how heavy is your setup and this includes your camera, your lens and any accessories that you decide to use. After you have this information, then you can pick a gimbal that can actually hold that weight. If you buy a gimbal that doesn't support the weight that you have, you most likely won't be able to balance it. And even if you do, you will probably have shaky footage and in some scenarios, the footage will be unusable. So if you're running a fairly light setup, here are some of my suggestions. The DJI RS3 Mini would be my first. It holds a payload up to 2 kilos and it's really small and light, which is great to carry around, especially for people who travel a lot. It also offers support for vertical shooting, which not all gimbals do. And if you shoot for social media a lot, that might be a useful feature to you. My second suggestion would be the Feiyu Scorp 2, which holds a maximum weight of 2.5 kilos. It's also relatively small, but a little bit heavier than the RS3 Mini. You can also shoot in vertical mode with this gimbal, and it has a great feature, which is AI tracking. And my third suggestion for lighter setups would be the Xeon Crane M3S. It offers a payload of up to 2 kilos, it's very small and light as well, and it supports vertical mode. One of the features that sets it apart is a built-in light that is useful when shooting in low light situations. So that might be something interesting for you to consider. These three suggestions are some of the cheapest you can buy for the quality that they offer. And before you go out and buy a new gimbal, here's a little tip for you. Gimbals tend to lose value rather quickly, so sometimes there are good deals on the used marketplace, whether your Facebook marketplace or even eBay. I would advise you to check those first because there's a lot of people who buy gimbals, they don't know how to use them and they end up selling them again and sometimes you get really good deals for brand new or almost new gimbals that are really worth the price and you can, you can save yourself a few bucks. Now if none of these gimbals are really suitable for you and you're really looking for a higher end gimbal that can hold uh, higher payloads, then I would really recommend you to get the DJI RS4 or RS4 Pro. Hell, you could even get away with buying an RS3 or RS3 Pro. I actually have an RS3 Pro and it's a great gimbal with enough power to hold heavy setups like cinema cameras with a payload up to 4.5 kilos. I also love the auto locking and unlocking system which allows you to start shooting within seconds. Even the DJI RS3 offers the same auto locking system with a payload up to 3 kilos which is enough for most people anyway. And the reason why I'm mainly recommending DJI gimbals is because I think their quality and compatibility with different setups is really unmatched. I've tested other gimbals in the past and I've always found that the DJI ones are more durable and they really have a higher quality than most gimbals around. And like I mentioned before, I know these gimbals can be quite expensive, that's why I recommend you to check the marketplaces before you buy a new one instead, because sometimes there's really good deals out there. And now, before we finish off the video, I just want to say that it's really annoying to see so many people shitting on gimbals all the time. I mean, I get it, gimbals can be a big clutch for you, and when used wrong, they can make your footage feel robotic and really soulless. I myself, at the beginning of my journey, I started using a gimbal for every single shot I would do, and now I realize that that was wrong, and that the gimbal is just a tool, and it needs to be used in the appropriate situation. It really throws your composition off in many situations and sometimes introduces unnecessary movement to your shots when you really didn't need any kind of movement at all. But here's exactly where the problem lies. Not knowing exactly when to introduce camera movements can lead to people overusing gimbals all the time, but to blame the gimbals it themselves it's really infuriating to say the least. A gimbal is just a tool just as much as a tripod is. If you're looking for a static shot, you obviously will use a tripod and not a gimbal, but if you're looking for a stabilized tracking shot, obviously don't go handheld because that simply won't give you the result that you're after. So first identify which tool is right for the job and then choose accordingly. But please don't say gimbals are shit because they can be amazing tools when used in the right situations. Honestly, I've been finding myself shooting handheld more and more, but I will still occasionally grab my gimbal to do specific shots that I need. It's all about finding the right balance and the right tool for the job. That's it for this video, I hope you found this to be useful in some way and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.